Hello, and welcome to Christianity with Kyle, where the Holy Spirit leads us into God's promises. In today's video, we're going to discuss the topic of, is salvation a gift? Was it truly a gift that God gave to us, or is there things we have to do in order to earn our salvation? And is it true that there are things we have to do after salvation to keep it? We're going to be discussing all those things and more. Certainly going to be tipping over some sacred cows in this video. So stick around. It's going to be another really good one. Let's go. Get used to different. This is that time in the video that I ask you to become a subscriber, and that's because Ecclesiastes 4, 9 says two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. And that's what I'm asking for you to become a subscriber and help us build this community so we can all succeed in advancing the kingdom of God. If you are a subscriber, I'd love for you to like, share, and comment on this video that helps get us into the algorithm and spread this message, the message of Christ, the, our Lord and Savior for all of eternity to all mankind. Let's get into the video. There's a, there's a seriously rampant issue in mainstream Christianity that's happening today, um, just like what's been taking place for thousands of years. This has been a, been a major confusion in the Christian church for as long as I can remember, as long as I can read, and I've read quite a few books on early church history. Uh, I read a lot of books on just tri Christian history in general. Um, and so this is the one thing that I have seen has been a constant from the moment salvation was available to us to this very day today. And what is it? Well, what it is, is people looking to earn their own salvation. Now this flies in serious contrast uh, to what Jesus gave to us. You see, Jesus gifted us with salvation. This is not something we can earn. If it's a gift, there that means that it's not possible to earn it. Otherwise, it would be a payment, okay? This was not a payment to us. This was a gift that we were gifted with righteousness. That's what grace means. It says, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, that by grace we have been saved. In other words, by a gift from God, we have been saved, right? And this gift, and in, in fact, Ephesians 2 says that, it says, by grace we have been saved. It is a gift, not through our own works, lest any man should boast, but by faith. Okay, so we have been saved by faith in this gift that God has given us. Now, I also get why there is confusion in the church. Now, does that give you a free pass to go act however you want? No, I would say you probably didn't truly understand what the gift was that you were given if you had that mentality, which means you're just a baby. That means you have the maturity of a literal newborn child that has very little to zero knowledge. So we're going to jump into Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, for my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And so there you have it. That's the exact scripture that's commonly recited for those who believe that they have to contribute towards their, their salvation in order to have salvation. And so there's, uh, there's some big issues with that. Number one, how do you know all of the things you're doing are enough to fulfill the requirement that God has for you? And number two, is how are you going to have confidence in salvation? How can you have assurance, reliance upon uh, trust? And you can't because you can't fully trust yourself because you know yourself. You know your shortcomings more than anybody else in this world, a little bit less than God, but more than anybody else, you cannot trust yourself. And so you can't truly have confidence in your salvation. What God did intend is for us to fully put our trust and our confidence in him. And that's because this verse is saying something very different. So now let's go ahead and dissect this verse. So then my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation. That is cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity. So immediately you understand that he's not talking about working out your salvation for salvation. No, he's saying you are born again on the inside. Your spirit has been made righteous, made holy, but your soul and your flesh are not. This is a scripture that's encouraging someone to get what's inside of them out into the world, which is exactly what Paul was doing with his walk. That's why the Bible says work out your salvation because it's on the inside right now, but work it out. Work it out through your soul, into your body, and then ultimately into the world for the world to receive and be blessed by. So now let's look at Philippians 2.13. Philippians 2.13 says this, 
For it is not your strength, but it is God who, who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. And so what Philippians 2.13 is doing is it's rounding off the rough edges of Philippians 2.12, which is saying, work out your own salvation. He's saying, you know, you can't do it. You don't have the abilities to do it in of your natural self. You can't work at your salvation. You need God's ability. You need God's strength. You need God's power. And so how can someone who's not born again get God's strength, ability, and power? Well, you don't have it. And if you're contributing to it, that infers that you there's something you're missing okay and if you're missing those things well then how are you going to use those things because they're not there for you to use no, they are there for you to use, which is why Philippians 2.13 is saying, now you're going to do this not of your own ability, but you're going to do this of God's ability that lives inside of you. And so the idea is that it's moving through us, through our soul, into our body, and then ultimately out our mouth into the world. Okay, well, just exactly what's happening right now in this moment when I'm ministering to you is I'm working out the salvation. I'm, I'm working out the understanding that I have because I have revelation and understanding on the inside of me, but I want to get it out into the world so that way the rest of the world can be blessed and benefit from this knowledge and understanding. And so here's the summary. We cannot contribute to our salvation in any way, shape, or form. Otherwise, it would be a payment and not a gift that was given by unearned favor that we receive through faith, okay? So we can't contribute to that in any way, shape, or form. Before salvation and after salvation, it's not necessary necessary to help reinforce our, our salvation. You're not reinforcing your salvation uh, by doing good things, by saying good things. What you're doing is you're getting that salvation, that life that's on the inside of you, and you're putting it into the world. In other words, you're shining God's light that lives on the inside of you into a dark world. And when light hits dark, the dark disappears. And that's the idea here is there is a lot of dark in this world and you are a light bearer of God and he wants you to shine your light. He wants me to shine our light. He wants us to shine our light into this dark place. That way the truth can be revealed, the truth of the good news of Jesus, that Jesus laid down his life and that, that, and that in doing so we can put our faith and trust in him, that he was perfect in all ways because not only did he lay down his life, but he was resurrected, which was God saying, yes, everything Jesus said and did was true. And so when we put our faith and trust in Jesus alone for salvation, that's when we can have perfect confidence in our salvation. Otherwise, we'd always have to question it. And when we do that, we recognize everything after that we have, we, we get to do. It's a blessing. It's the least we can do to shine God's light, to expose the truth and rebuke the lies that are currently being spread throughout all the world because the enemy is a sea, he's sowing seeds of discord, right? He's spreading lies and misinformation and disinformation about the gospel. Look, you've got to earn it. If you're not earning it today, oh, you're probably not going to go to heaven. And so what he's doing is he's getting you to a place of depression. He's getting you to a place of sadness. He's getting you to a place of frustration. So that way, ultimately, people will reject God. And that's why they need that light. That's why they need this message that it's not about them and salvation. Their contribution to salvation was only the reality of why salvation was necessary. Their contribution is what put Jesus up on that cross. And so because Jesus went to that cross for us, we can put our faith and confidence and trust in him and in him alone and not of ourselves, which frankly is way better. This is a much better process that God built than the traditions that we've entered into this system, which only hinder the coming to the fullness of the system, only hinder walking a spiritually mature lifestyle. And so this is what I want you to understand today is that you cannot help earn your salvation. You can only work out your salvation, meaning you can only shine God God's light that's already living inside of you into this world for, for people to see that what you have is different than what the world provides, for people to see God in you, for, for people to recognize the life and the energy and the ability and the power and the love and the grace and the mercy and all of the blessings that God has given you because it's his light shining. And when they do that, they want to be a part of it. Well, hey, that's all I've got for today. I pray this blesses you and may God's richest and best be forever yours. Thank you for watching this video. I have another channel where I exclusively focus on financial ministry to help equip every single one of us for the digital future that is coming. And when you're equipped for that, you will advance the kingdom like never before. So go check out that channel. Your link is in the description below. Subscribe, and that way you're equipped for the digital future. Have a blessed day.